Welcome to our second video of our How Not to Big Wall course, where we hope after watching 12 of these, you'll do better up your first big wall. And this is part of a project called the Big Wall Bible, where everything we don't include in these videos can go. When you guys give us feedback, or if we forget something, or need to change something, because when I hit publish, that's Forever. it for these things. <laughs> this video is gonna focus on the things that you need to prepare. This isn't even how to pack the bag. Every item that's gonna be on a vertical cliff face needs to be ready to be on that cliff face. Yep. And so we made a list of X number of things that we're gonna go into each category and we're just gonna hold up what we like to take. He takes different stuff, mm -hmm. I take different stuff. In case this is your first video you stumbled upon, my name's Ryan Jinks and I've done 18 big walls successfully uh, the years prior to starting this channel in 2016. And my name is Jeremiah Letourneau, and I am from the Midwest, a uh, casual climber, but obsessive climber. Very. Who's done eight big walls successfully, and uh, I've actually only been doing a big wall for the last year. So, but uh, It's like more than twice as good as me now, because he spent five years training for it, yeah. and uh, I didn't. So uh, I think we bring two very different uh, approaches to the big walling learning experience. Mm -hmm. And I grew up near Yosemite, so I just kind of threw myself into the deep end. Um, I think also the way that we approach doing walls are different because- Because you're faster. I tried, I try, we, I, we have different values, right? Okay, yeah. Different values that bring two walls. And I go up there as the best campsite in Yosemite. And I go up there because I'm wanting to see how fast can I do it, and then the next time come back and see if I can do it faster another time. Yeah, I like to go up as fast as possible to my next camp spot so I can have as long on that portal ledge as possible. <laughs> but keep in mind, our context is mostly built around Yosemite. I have climbed in Zion once. Mm -hmm. uh, I have not, yeah. only Yosemite, so. Um, but there are more places than Yosemite in the world, but this is just so you understand where we're coming from. And the Big Wall Bible's meant for a collective consciousness of information, so if you have information that you'd like to share and give feedback to everyone about your favorite way to take a poop bag, then uh, go on there and look up how to submit that information because once the camera's turned off, I'm a one-man show and I need it to be delivered in a very smooth and easy way for me to add it to the blog that this is all gonna be on. Yep, cool. Um, so, what is the first category of things we need to prepare? Uh, well, the, one of the first things that I like to think through is our water, right? That's above anything else, you don't really need food, you'll die sooner without water. Um, so let's talk about how we prepare our water bottles. I feel like I'm dying without food, but you, you're right. I would die sooner without water. Um, I'm pretty picky about what bottles I take because if you drop them, you, um, uh, if it lands on somebody, you'll kill them. Um, uh, yeah. Even a two liter bottle is four pounds or like two kilograms. So like mm -hmm. it's, it's heavy. Yep. Uh, going a hundred miles an hour. Absolutely. And I want, I want to make sure that no matter, even if I'm filling water bottles and I'm taking lids off or anything like that, that mm -hmm. I, while I'm doing that, it's always connected to a wall. So I like a nice strap. So that's so, a pattern I think we're gonna cover a lot is how's it gonna be connected? Yep. So, so my main one here is uh, I do gallon size jugs. I like the gallon jugs. It doesn't matter what necessary brand, it's the quantity that matters to me. Uh, but you'll notice that I don't have just a thing that I'm uh, carrying a clip to the plastic loop. You should not just trust this loop, but I actually attached my own cord to it. So the way I attach it is on the bottom, I do a double fisherman's knot at the very bottom of it. And I sometimes put it here. It doesn't really matter where it is as long as it's connected with something with a good strong integrity knot. And then I wrap the whole bottle in duct tape. And the, there's two reasons why I do that is it's not just always for the rope, but I also have backup duct tape for other times when I need to use it for poop tubes or mm. even just other basic repair. I, like I that. know I, that I have some duct tape. Yeah. yeah. It's important not to duct tape the string to the sides. That's not good enough. Yeah. Like, if you drop it, you kill someone. So like uh, his goes underneath the bottle. Yep. It is the whole bottom and I do the bottom first and then I go around it because then it even holds that better too, you know? Yeah. So then what I do is I always throw a carabiner actually through both of these things and then it, it's, I don't know, redundant. Like for some reason. Yeah. It's nicer to clip the plastic thing. Yeah, it's, it's already there. It's but. there. Now, uh, please don't use that really thin, flimsy plastic that you're like, wow, this is a handle. Mm -hmm. Like, don't clip that. I've seen people do that on a wall. And like, 
another party, I was yeah. trying not to lose it's my mind. It's just, and when it gets hot and that starts melting it's, too. Like it's yeah. so, it's such a huge consequence. Plus you lose a gallon of water. Like this is horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we did another video where we tested clove hitching the, the throat of a bottle. Mm -hmm. And uh, it wasn't as successful as I hoped. I was actually quite disappointed in the fact that almost none of them held. So in what context and what load were they failing at is I think a really important thing to keep in mind too. Dropping them on the tower. Yeah. So if you're, if you got something clipped, I'm not gonna lead with, I don't take this long to lead, mm -hmm. um, this to my harness, and I take a whipper, it's going to fall and then, and then jerk. And that is possibly not gonna hold. But if I am pulling this out of the bag, a clove hitch, this is just a piece of paracord that's just clove hitched around the throat of this. And I've been saving these. This is the ones I've been using since 2006. And you just take clove and it goes around the throat super good enough. And you can see that it's not like barely there. You can also do a barrel knot, but um, either way, like, mm -hmm. and I can test it and I can test it, almost hit you in the face. But um, this is, I like two liter bottles. And the reason is, is because this is my poop tube. I never poop before I drink one of them. And I cut it three quarters away around and it turns into a Pac-Man. And then I take this um, and take this off before I ever go up a wall. Mm -hmm. It's just not necessary. And then I take duct tape with me and I duct tape the poop because it's usually like, usually I'm pretty regular in the mornings because mm -hmm. I was too stressed the day before. And then I'll go in the morning, you go in the morning and we'll close it up and we'll duct tape it. Yep. Sometimes I'll cut it open again, we get another day in there, but like, and this is pretty bomber. Yep. And if this is gonna be my poop tube, I might reinforce it with some webbing. And I'll hang it uh, 30 feet below my hull bag. Yeah, you don't, it, it's amazing how much smell comes out still. You yeah. Know? So we do have some different tips too to deal with waste when we get to that section as well. Yeah, so, but my bottles are also my poop tube, so they're very like correlated. Now you don't want to use something like this. I've seen somebody, I've heard of somebody take these up and before they could get even to their first bivy, they've all broke. There's those points as well as these kink super bad and break and leak really easy too on the sides as well as the tops. Now, if I wasn't at Brent's house, who we did the canyon course with and we we're in his house, I would show you right now how bad it is. Yeah. Um, and it's gonna get smashed in the hall bag. It's gonna come out and it's gonna leak on all your stuff and all your stuff's now gonna be wet. It's so bad at so many levels. How strong is the handle? Who cares? This is horrible. That's why I didn't even test it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this has enough of a lip here that I have clove hitched that in the past, but I definitely like your method more of taking cord or webbing and going underneath. There's just more, I, I wanna have certainty that I'm not gonna lose the most valuable because oftentimes you don't usually bring more water than you <laughs> need because it's, don't bring it's the heaviest water. object. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The other question I have for you, Ryan, is do you obsess over this being a climbing rated cord, accessory cord, or is 550 paracord from Walmart? Uh, well, 550 paracord is pretty good strong. enough for you. It's not, it's more than super good enough. This yeah. doesn't need to be accessory. Yep. Rated cord at this strength is almost the strength of paracord anyways. Yeah. We built I, massive nets out of paracord. I feel very confident with it. Same, mine is not a climbing rated cord either. I just got mine from Walmart and it's cheap and- It's not a climbing rated bottle. Yeah. You just have to respect the stuff. Uh, never, and, and it has to have a way to be connected. Let's emphasize that. Uh, you can't just set this here, hold this. I need yeah. to pull something else out. Yep. No, no, no. You want to no, be able no. to take it and clip it up to your anchor for any needs. Yeah. So. Now, um, this is one of the only things that I don't have a dedicated carabiner for. Almost everything I take, um, I'll have a dedicated way to clip it when I pull it out of the bag. Otherwise, you just scrounge in for free beaners. And they go real fast when you haven't associated free beaners to anything already. Yeah. They're called free beaners for a reason. Yeah. Rabbit trail, quantity. Quantity, that's <laughs> good to talk about. Yeah. One and a half of these per person per day. Uh, so three liters per mm -hmm. person per day is how I think. I, because I'm there in June, mm -hmm. it's a really important to know that temperature, right? So, it, so that's the baseline, that's 70 mm -hmm. and sunny, which ironically is the only time I ever climb. But, because <laughs> I go out of my way. but. Your climbing season is short because you're a teacher and you only have your summers off. Yep. So sometimes you're climbing when it's hot out. Yep. How and much do you go through in a day? So I usually try to budget minimum a gallon, but that's also because- That's the maximum you ever want to budget yep. for. Which is about 3.8 liters. So it's a little bit more than the, the average, but then it's also because I do have things like 
coffee for my breakfast. If you're the, cooking that, mm -hmm. I all can... of my meals are de uh, rehydrated meals. Um, and so I do need extra water for that stuff too. I can stay within my one and a half um, bottles, three liters per person per day uh, while cooking, as long as it's just one mountain house at night and a little mm -hmm. oatmeal in the morning. Um, but I try not to climb when it's hot out. Mm -hmm. I'll never take more than a gallon per person per day because I cannot consume enough in order to utilize that mm -hmm. volume. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to bring more. I have a hard- Don't climb if it's hotter than that. Yeah, yeah. I have a hard time always consuming enough throughout my day. So yeah. I, I've made a gallon work with me with my the, the type of meals I do, but I've also, at 104, we ran out of water and we were budgeting on that because we were climbing in 90 and 100 degrees, a gallon and a half per person. And we still ran out of water. Really? Yeah, and that was on Lurking Fear, so it okay, was- Okay, I got baked off of a wall once in October. It was 100 plus degrees. We were in the sun like all afternoon. And basically we couldn't, we came down with all of our water. We couldn't, we couldn't drink it enough. Like drinking it did nothing for us. We were, our brains were getting foggy and everything. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. um, I guess just know your, your season. Yeah. In the winter, I might do one of these per person per day. Yeah. Your um, season. Your season matters. Matters a lot. Um, which if you haven't then, check out episode one, which goes through the pre-logistics and what's our first topic. <laughs> Don't go when it's. Anything but other than 70 and sunny. Plan well. Just so you know, I did about 10 epics uh, where I didn't, um, so I 28 walls, 18 were successful, 10 were failures. Nine out of 10 of those failures was all based around uh, weather or water. Mm -hmm. So like if you just dial in the weather and water thing, you're already better. I think the next topic that would be great to talk about is how do you get all of your stuff to the base of the wall? Mm -hmm. um, because with all of the water and all of the gear, it ends up being the original load are over 200 pounds. That's not necessarily what you're hauling up because you're wearing your rack, you're wearing, uh, you're the climbing with the rope and all that stuff. The lead climber is gonna have about 30, 40, 50 pounds. But yeah. we gotta get all that stuff to the wall. And there's, there's really two main approaches to that, right? I, depending if it's a short approach, like to try to get all of my water to the base first. So I'll just do a load of just water to the base and label my water bottles. I'll, I'll put on my water bottle a post-it note and duct tape it with my name and my start date. That's put a date on anything you ever leave, yep. whether it's in a bear box or at a, a route or anything. Um, and never leave food at a route. And so then with the haul bags, I'll be able to get a load there, which means the next morning, the only thing I have to get there is all of my climbing gear and sleeping gear. Um, but at least it's 80 pounds lighter. Shuttling loads versus one-time loads. I'm a one-time load kind of a guy. Why do you like wow. that? Wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, it's because it's better. But I have to hike the stuff off. And the top is further away from the car than the bottom. And mm -hmm. so if I can't carry the water and the gear, I'm not gonna be able to carry everything down. The other thing is I'd rather just suffer. I can go about 110 pounds on my back before I'm not happy. So mm -hmm. I can get 110 pounds up to lurking fear. And yeah, lurking fear yeah. is with a 60, 70, 80 pound pack is about an hour and a half with nothing on you is like 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure you can do it faster. But yeah, I don't care if it takes me an extra half an hour and I do it once. Um, it depends on your time, right? You're in the valley long enough to be like, I'm gonna utilize today. Yeah. Whereas I'm showing up as a weekend warrior and I'm like, I'm gonna get there at 4 a.m. And I wanna start climbing at seven. Yeah. Usually. It Part of the other reason with the extra time I have, it's nice to also familiarize yourself with the base of the route, which is another reason I like to do it. So then when it's in the morning at three in the morning and it's dark outside, I don't have to try to find where is the start of the route. Mm -hmm. um, so I like to try to do that right at sunset. The heat's low, I can see where's my start tomorrow. Okay, let's. The times I have done that is I'll go up to fix one or two pitches mm. and bring as much stuff as I can like water that can easily be left there. And then the rack stays at the high point. And then the next day all we're bringing is about 30, 40, 50 pounds of the other yeah. stuff. This last time when I was on Salde, the one thing that really shocked me was I arrived at the base of Salde wall and just to my left, somebody shuttled loads, but they lo brought everything besides for food. They had brought their sleeping bags, sleeping pads, clothes, everything there. And that really bothered me. Cool. And they left it for two days. They brought it in a haul bag. 
dumped it all and out. And then dumped it out like a homeless camp. Yeah. Right? And, and by the way, South Bay and, um, and the fixed lines to heart ledges is a really, like it's walked Walked around. all the time. Yeah, it's walked all the time. It's not obscure. Yeah. It's not the last thing on the edge of a yeah. cap. So um, be mindful. Don't yeah. be a slob. So the next topic is preparing your haul bag so you can drag it up 3,000 feet up the captain. Check, check, Ryan, can you hear me? Yes, this is a really cheesy commercial. <laughs> you can come back and frame now. <laughs> Look at the range we got. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rocky Talkie helps sponsor part of this video in order to make this free for you guys. They have a 10% off discount in the description below, rockytalkie.com slash how not to. When you use that link, you get 10% off and they give me a 10% kickback, which helps makes this viable. And in big walling, they're pretty essential and because it's not just communicating that you're off belay or you're ready to haul, which you can technically do with rope tugs. There's a lot mm -hmm. of things that are nice to be able to communicate and um, they last for days, even if you forget to turn them off at night. Which a big wall includes multiple day projects. Yeah, so I wouldn't even think about turning these off and I wouldn't even think about bringing spare batteries for these and I'm a pretty redundant backup kind of a guy because they're so reliable and everything I've had in the past was awful. I think you have to switch your batteries around. I have to flip one battery upside down so it doesn't turn on accidentally and hose me. I used to have to take my batteries out because it would drain my batteries even off. Mm -hmm. And then the range would suck and everything. Not that within 60 meters, you're gonna have to deal with range. So these are gonna be solid, but it's also really good when it's windy and stuff. But I'm yep. just gonna do a little product placement here and get to the next part, which is getting your haul bag ready to take up a 3000 foot cliff. Yeah. Because the interesting thing about these haul bags is they are dual purpose. They're meant to get your loads there, so they have straps and belts and all that stuff, but you don't want those straps and belts while hauling. Just like the portal edge, which we'll get to, don't open it your first time, you know, when you need it. Um, mm -hmm. Get familiar with your bag. Uh, we'll commonly call these pigs. That is a, a nickname these things are called. And here, ready? Yeah. Okay. What do you have in this? Gosh. All right. Just the rack. Honestly, it's just the rack. Wow. Um, so this is more of a medium size <laughs> yep. or a smaller size. They get bigger. Um, but learn how these straps go in. Don't just look. Mm -hmm. Stuff them in the, the, the pocket that this goes in. Take the strap off, um, put it in there, really figure out where do you put your uh, strap? So everything actually gets tucked inside, but the key is everything has to get pulled out for these to get put back in here. You can't put the straps in the bag when it's full of water and all of your gear and I all that stuff. I always forget this mm -hmm. part and then this has already been uh, fully loaded. that anymore. <laughs> fully loaded. So. Um, so this isn't how to haul. There's a, that's a whole nother video, but it's just the fact that you should have uh, whatever uh, bottle. Where's my bottle? If you use my method of hauling, which you can decide when you see all the different ways of doing things. Um, I want to protect the knot because if you have this connected to the bag, it's going to grind your rope mm -hmm. to a pulp. And so I like really tall bottles. So I have smart water bottles. It's the only time I'll spend that much money on a single bottle of water. And then I duct tape the crap out of it. I put accessory cord through it. And it's the only time I use a non-rated carabiner is to keep it, basically I'll clip it to the swivel. Um, so it doesn't slide up and slide so down So it doesn't, later. so if like you have slack, it stays there. But I, all of this kind of stuff, which will go more into the hauling thing, is all done before you show up to Yosemite. Yep. Um, don't, don't try to do this at the base of the route. All of my walls have been failures, or all of my walls have been failures. <laughs> <laughs> all of my failures on walls has been from a lack of preparation, not because I couldn't climb something. I've always been able to solve the climbing part. Mm -hmm. To fail to plan is planning to fail. Yeah. So, um, Understand your bag. Mm -hmm. uh, we are gonna get into bags probably more later. This video is already a bit long, but this is the kind of information we need to be able to share. Uh, sometimes I'll try to make an edit between eight and 12 minutes after taking three cups of coffee and binge watching Mr. Beast so I keep it interesting for you. We're just gonna have a conversation about all these bullet points we prepared in advance and it's all gonna be on the Big Well Bible. Yep. So do you want to dive into anything now about your haul bag? Uh, I just do one little thing that's different that uh, 
makes it so I don't have to bring a bottle protector. And that's partly uh, just due to different styles of climbing. And so there, I still use a bottle protector, but I do use a different method. I'm just gonna show it super quick. So what I do here is I'm just gonna put up a fake hull here. Not gonna do a real hull, but you can see here in our system here is I don't use a bottle protector. Instead, I use a different kind of project uh, progress capture here. So I use a old, what's called a mini tracks. It's the old version of the micro tracks as my bottle protector. And as you can see, I don't need it. The nice thing is this takes all the wear and tear. And yes, I know it's going to get scratched up, but we all scratch up our gear before coming to Yosemite anyways. So, so you don't look new. Yeah. But what I like with this is this allows me to be able to get a two to one. So whether my follower is trying to help me out later or I need to help myself out, I can grab this and can actually haul from underneath and it pulls the bag up. Which um, will cover all the benefits. Like there's actually a lot of benefits, but you can see there's no knot, just this, which he doesn't mind having scraped up, it's metal. And this doesn't take any wear and tear because it's not getting grinded up against the wall. It can move. Under tension, yeah. So uh, you don't want your rope getting ground on because, well, obviously. But the difference is if you're first starting out, one thing costs uh, $2. One thing costs a hundred dollars. Cause you technically there's sw swivel people and uh, non-swivel people. And it doesn't matter uh, which one you are. You don't have to have a swivel. You don't have to have an extra pulley progress capture system. Just makes things easier sometimes. Let's talk about what food to take next. Then we'll talk about how to carry that food. Uh, we'll start with breakfast. This is all I eat for breakfast. I eat one oatmeal and I pour my hot water into the oatmeal packet so I have no dishes. You have to make sure you have a glove or something you set it in because they're mm -hmm. pouring boiling water in your hand. What do you have for breakfast? Well, I go over packing in terms of organization. So I actually have designated meal bags. So this is my breakfast bag and inside of my breakfast bag is another bag. And inside those bags are three more bags. So I plan like everything that I need, including my coffee, my oatmeal packets, and I do three oatmeal packets as well as an energy goose shot to get my electrolytes out to start the day. So just right there, you can see it is quite a bit more, which also does mean more water, uh, which yeah. goes back to our water conversation. Yeah, um, this is what it looks like for me in, to get to lunch. I just don't start my day off that way. Yeah. Um, so I'll have the next two things, two meals, mm -hmm. little meals, in my pockets already or easily accessible. Yeah. So. Um, the one little thing I like about this is all of my trash goes back inside of this. Um, so everything has its designated spot. Well, if you're going to talk about your bag, Let's I want to talk about bag. my bag. <laughs> so, um, this is, uh, you ideally want two of the same size. This is lined. Um, and so because I have two layers in here, I would take this empty pack and I would set it between the two layers. And so that's my garbage. The stuff in the middle is where I'd actually have How's that lined up? Is my food. And then inside is my garbage. It kind of gets nasty after a few days, but I don't like to take things like uh, fruit cups that don't, the plastic doesn't collapse because mm -hmm. it doesn't work well with my system here. If you're using the cheap food for less, really thin grocery bags that tend to be when you get them for free, these are the kind of grocery bags when you're paying 10 cents each, yep. then I'll use four of them and I'll tape the handle mm -hmm. with different mm -hmm. colored tape. And so one bag is gonna be my breakfast and dinner because that's usually when I'm in the port ledge or on a ledge. And then I have another colored tape. Lunches. And I have the tape with the tag, mm -hmm. so I'll write on there. So no one's having to memorize and guess this stuff. Yeah. And that's like my day thing. And that'll have anything I want easily accessible at the top of the haul bag, which would include yeah. my goo, my snacks, my Snickers, my Oreos. I eat a lot of sugar. <laughs> Um, what I bring for my lunch is, again, another designated bag for that. And then that includes things like, if I want to bring fruit, it's already dehydrated. Uh, try to keep my water weight as low as I can. So dehydrated stuff like mango slices or kiwi slices. It requires you to drink more. Which is good. It does. But, so that's one thing that's in, usually in here. And then individual bags like all of my granola bars and again, goose shots and Things to keep my high, my sugar high, because your blood sugar keep drops. Your, keep your high going. Yeah. <laughs> as well as I do also have uh, ham and cheese, tortilla shells. The reason why I do tortillas and not bread is it often gets squished. You're right? going to have tortillas at the end, anyways. At the end, anyways. <laughs> you might as well bring them starting as tortillas. Or peanut butter jelly tortillas. 
Peanut butter and jelly can make for a great easy lunch, except I wouldn't take um, jars. Jars. Don't take jars. I would grab the squeezable jelly and squeezable peanut butter um, because then I can just, well, it's just so much easier. Yeah. And then they're pretty flat when you're done with it. The jelly squeezable is a pretty like solid plastic. Yep. The peanut butter is more like a, a bag, a yeah. packet. I pre-make mine and then those also go in bags too because then I don't have to deal with any cleanup. It's just grab and go. There's a chance if you're climbing a wall, you're a dirt bag and that you took a bunch of those little jelly containers from some yeah. poor restaurant. Don't do that. I'm not good at winking. <laughs> Dinner. Dinner. All right, so this gets to- It's 2 a.m. And you really pushed you... hard to get to that ledge that somebody else got to. Yeah, so you finally get up to this thing that smells like piss and you are ready to eat dinner. <laughs> so I go back into my hall bag and I find my supper, which again, I go into another designated bag. Inside of this designated bay is my dehydrated meals. Again, which is why it add, I add so much extra water to my, my original Cooking value. is nice. So you can bring things that don't require food or require heat and water. Yeah. And you can avoid the jet boil and the extra water, but it's not as good. Dr. Pete on Pete does a lot of like uh, ravioli cans and soup cans that you can just eat it ready to go. So when you do arrive at 2 a.m., you can just start eating right away. It doesn't have to be cooked. I always just like the idea of a hot meal at the end of the day. It... You're carrying the w water weight of a ravioli can, but you're also not carrying as much water and nor does Pass the Piton Peak care about weight. Yeah. <laughs> bring a 24 pack of beer next time you're with them. If you bring a meal like this, even though it does say two servings, you do need to keep in mind that this is for one person. Two servings typically feeds one person. Um, so don't think that your two servings are gonna feel, feed you and your partner. You're hungry at the end of the day, as well as one packet is 740 calories, which is what you need at the end of the day. He eats a lot, okay? I eat like one taco for lunch, but I'm gonna eat 45 minutes later. I do eat a two serving mountain house when I can stomach eating a mountain house. <laughs> Backpacker's pantry is a little bit better, but I warn you, uh, chana masala, they have the ingredients backwards. It starts with turmeric and then they added stuff. And that was disappointing one night when I had a mouthful, that I couldn't even finish it. Either go with foods you're, you know you like, or maybe try them before you go on a wall. You don't wanna mm -hmm. go up there and realize you can't eat anymore of something and you need the calories. Yep, yep. I don't even know why I have this one still. Should have just thrown it away. You want it? I'll try it. Free um, food. Dirt bag never turned down food. <laughs> <laughs> so I have two grocery bags for food. Mine goes this, into all a main bear bag. Uh, it's, it is waterproof and all that stuff. Oh, this so. is a bear, the, the Kevlar kind. No, but that's what I call it. It's, <laughs> I call it my bear bag. Okay. So this is waterproof. Yep. I just got it at Walmart. Uh, it's waterproof. Ish. Um, ish. Yep. Yeah. But then I usually have it pre-rigged with some kind of cord here again so I can just clip it to the anchor and then open it. I don't like to just clip a carabiner to this and hang it to the wall. How are you connecting it is the theme. Obviously, you don't want to connect it to this. It's forcing out the plastic, but the little space between here you can put a run a cord through. You can run some paracord in a loop and paracord in a loop, and then you can clip both of them. And if you make them loose, you have a bomber way to hold this. Just like an anchor, how you ask yourself, are you redundant? Be thinking about every bag and attachment. Are you redundant? This, this probably wouldn't kill somebody, but you're coming down because you're gonna this run out of food. This is one day's of food. <laughs> That's one day? Close for me. Whoa. Yeah. This guy eats a lot. Whoa, that's, okay. a, that's a lot of food. <laughs> well, it's, uh, yeah. It's Luckily, a... you climb walls in like one and a half yeah, days. Yeah, move quickly. I carry about the same amount of food, but it takes me three days. So, so yeah, you okay, gotta cook go it. it. Yeah, yeah you gotta cook, cook it. it. Now, there are a couple different ways in which you can cook your food, right? So, kind of, you're not gonna bring a big camping stove on a wall. What do you bring? Um, lots of uh, virgin timbers for a campfire. I wanna kind of pull out this hanging kit just to kind of show Oh, you it. have the hanging I kit. Oh, good, good, kit. good. Oh, I think this goes on the actual burner. So I have to take all this out, get my burner on there, drop my lid. <laughs> how it's, oh drop my, my God, so. <laughs> this, this is how not to big wall. <laughs> Don't drop your stuff everywhere. All right, so that goes on there. And then this snaps into the hanging kit. 
if I can rotate it right. It's kind of got like a sweet spot there. It does have a hanging kit. Every, everything's metal, so there's no chance for that to burn. Get it into that little hole there can sometimes be a little frustration. The price of this thing, I, I can't remember what I paid for it, but I remember like it was outrageous. <laughs> so I tend to favor the jet boil when I go up a wall, but how are you going to clip it and connect it? This four inch hose clamp goes around a jet boil really well. It's $3 because I have gear fear. I added knots on the side, even though now that I've clamped it on there, I don't think I've gone and come off. <laughs> um, and now I have a way to hang this while I'm cooking. And that just is the way you want to have stuff. Yep. Um, it's not always in a portal ledge that you're cooking. Correct. Yep. Um, and you want to be careful when you're in a portal ledge and it's cold out. And you know how sometimes the flame likes to come up the sides while everything's still cold. Mm -hmm. um, don't turn on the gas real big, freak out and throw it to your partner with a homemade fly in a snowstorm at the top of El Cap connected to a tree. <clears throat> It yep. happened to me. He really? Yeah, he he panicked and and he like and the flames were going higher than the can and he no went way. and oh threw my. it to me and I'm like, wow, right? And so like I get into like flow state mode when yeah. like the situation gets really bad and so I turned it off. But yeah. like, wow, I almost it really bad. I almost burned to death in a snowstorm. Wow, in a plastic bubble. And so we didn't have a good hanging kit for him to hang this. Um, make sure you have air ventilation, obviously, yeah. but yep. yeah, just, this is, this is great. Um, I made mine long because mm -hmm. I wanted mine to be out of the way if I'm not hanging it and I'm just on the ground, but his mine short is version. Short, and I actually found out that it doesn't drip down to where the flames are at. So yeah. it doesn't seem to be an issue. And the boiling water temperature is not going to melt, um, a nylon strap. Yep. So try not to use like a Dyneema sling. Dyneema does melt lower mm -hmm. than uh, nylon. Sensibility. I just don't like to put anything inside it besides for water because I don't want to do any extra cleaning. Yeah, I um, never cook in it. Yep. Never. It's your choice. You have your system, but I just like to put water in it. But you have to bring food that you can pour hot water into to make the thing. And they right. have like uh, food grade bags yeah. that you can add, like Ziploc bags that you can add hot water. Mm -hmm. um, I would love more menu tips. Absolutely. And that would be uh, the, one of the best parts about the uh, Big Well Bible. And so if you guys have that, please give feedback, submit that information, we'll add it to the menu. I like to use Noon Tablets. It's an electrolyte supplement. It's not too sweet because when you're on the wall for multiple days, uh, your taste buds kind of change. And so I don't like Gatorade because it's too sweet for me, um, mm. but I like tablets that I can put in my own personal water bottle and I can add extra if I need to, or just, just leave it as water. Don't contaminate the water supply because you're jacked up on yeah. Gatorade powder. Um, but I like those noon tablets because it gives you more than just uh, sugar and sweets, but it also the electrolytes, which is what gets your brain processing correctly. I think it's important to bring food you like, not mm -hmm. just food that's convenient. Mm -hmm. So you bring Oreos, I bring Snickers if it's not a hot trip. Yep. Um, bring something that's psychologically going to make you better. That's not the time to learn to try to cut sugar out of a diet. Correct, yeah. If you are addicted to sugar, take sugar. You're going to hate being on a wall if you don't have what your body is used to. Mm -hmm. I brought uh, like hard salami and a cheese block too, just for the, the fat and the calories because your brain needs to keep That's a major moving. lunch thing I do. Yep. Um, salami lasts longer than it should on a wall, mm -hmm. even when it gets hot. Mm -hmm. um, so keep in mind, oh, 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 really cool trick. Yeah. Freeze, don't freeze too many. Freeze the, well, in my case, the two liter bottles. Good, yep. And you create mm -hmm. a refrigerator at the bottom. So you can fit, I think, eight of them around the base of a haul bag. Mm -hmm. And in the center, you can put whatever food you yes, want. Like a cold beer. <laughs> you can put in the center. Uh, keep in mind, it's at the bottom. You know, I have to get that at some point. But you can have a dinner that might spoil mm -hmm. otherwise eat it the first and second night, and only that third and fourth night are you eating food that wouldn't spoil, which is obviously not gonna be as good. Yep. So don't freeze too much and then end up in like 50, 60 degree weather, and then you're de dying from dehydration because all your water's salt. Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, when it's hot out, sometimes it's nice just to pull those things out and just oh, like totally. hug it. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I typically will freeze three quarters of a bottle so it doesn't like expand or ruin the bottle as well yeah, and then yeah. top them off. That's, that's the good thing to talk about is like you don't want to fill them up all the way and then freeze them. Yeah. Because Cause science. Yeah. Well, I was just like, don't forget to bring a spoon fork. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I bring a metal one. 
like a, a titanium one, just because then it's less likely to break, but we don't have to talk about it. We just did. Sure. And I just included it. Cool. Good yeah. <laughs> Anything else I think that we forgot is going to be in the Big Wall Bible? Other people's lists, their entire list, will just add to the Big Wall Bible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so we'll have like 10, 15 lists on there that you can just kind of go through and make your own. How do you plan on sleeping at night? The sleeping on a wall, uh, there's a couple different ways, right? Laying down is one way, the other way is with the Grieger in your hand. Yeah. How do you sleep up there and how do you not fall off? Well, the three things you need to think, just think about is, are there already natural ledges that you can sleep on without having to bring things like portal edges, hammocks, anything? Can you just sleep on the wall? Two, is it busy enough where you might need to bring a portal ledge because all those other ledges are already taken, so you might need to stop it somewhere in between, right? And then three is a mix between the two, usually. I hate taking portal ledges where I know there are ledges. And what's great about the permit right. system now is, if everyone's applying for them properly, you kind of know if it's gonna be crowded or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I tend to enjoy harder routes now, um, which gets me off of the, the busy, busy lines, the busy lines. Yeah. and so then I just have to take a portal edge. Uh, I used a portal edge. overhung ones too, kind of nice to be able to have a portal edge for ledges to belay off of. Yes, um, we'll get into flagging. So in hanging belays all the time. Flagging is where you connect your portal edge to the rope, so it's hanging like a flag. Yep. And so it stays permanently set up, so you always can just stand on your own feet when you're at um, a belay. Yep. And that keeps your sight, not only is your butt happy, but just is good mentally mm -hmm. to just feel fresh as much as possible. You wanna keep the stoke up. Yep. Portal edges are stoke. So what do you bring in case of bad weather, whether or not you are on a portal ledge or you're on a natural ledge, what do you do to stay warm and stay out of the elements? Well, if I know it's gonna rain, I don't go. But if I, you know, if it's got that 10% chance and mm -hmm. I'm willing to risk it or whatever, uh, there are flies that are made for every type of portal ledge. Mm -hmm. And um, what you should do is buy a fly after you've been in a snowstorm without one and then never have been in a snowstorm since buying it like I did. Great tip. Yeah, great tip. Great tip. Mm -hmm. Best $400 I ever spent. What I bring is uh, a bivy sack. For a portal ledge. Even for a portal ledge, because I oftentimes don't want to bring that fly if I just know it's going to be mediocre or kind of windy at night, so some of those extra things. Lost, not, a, not a bad downpour. Lost Arrow Direct. You have to bring one of these, mm -hmm. uh, even though there's ledges, because the wind is so uh, aggressive at night on Lost Arrow. Yep. So inside of my bivy sack, a bivy sack is really just a place where my sleeping bag can go into, and it's like essentially a hard shell for my sleeping bag. Yep. Um, it also it's is waterproof. waterproof, and it's have a net over my face so it stays off my face so it's not just like touching my face all throughout the night. Yeah, black diamond big wall hooped bivy, which actually attaches to the wall. Um, so that's clipped in the whole time. And then I keep my sleeping pad in here. My sleeping pad is an uh, inflatable uh, sleeping pad in here. So then when I unroll this, my sleeping pad doesn't just blow away. I, it's saw, always you, I saw you slip it into the bivy flat mm -hmm. inflate, and then you rolled it up. Correct. Okay. Yep. And then after that, I also have my sleeping bag. Okay. And again, even though I can clip my sleeping bag here, actually on the inside of my sleeping bag is already pre-rigged. I like to bring a pillow with my sleeping bag. Okay. But I have my sleeping bag with an extra string attached to everything. So when I pull my bag out, you wanna grab that? Pull, 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 pull. It smells like you've been on a wall. Oh dude, it stinks. <laughs> is everything including the bag is actually attached with a girth hitch to the bottom of the bag and the side of the bag. And then I just take a carabiner and I clip this cord to my ledge or my portal edge or something like that. So then I can't ever lose this. Yep, uh, even the air mattress. Oh, it stinks so bad. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it over so there. Bad. <laughs> I don't use a bivy sack. And like, if I'm gonna be in a fly, I'm gonna be in a fly. Uh, and I use a down sleeping bag. Mm -hmm. And you really should use a synthetic one because if you get wet, you will... Stay warmer when it's wet. Well, like you won't stay warm at all with down. Yeah. Um, yeah. So synthetic bags are l more bulky and heavier. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I climb when it's 70 and sunny now. And that life decision I made, commitment to myself, has saved so much of a hassle. Here's kind of an interesting thing. Even though the night uh, got down to like 60, 70 degrees still in the valley in June okay. at night, because it was hot when you were it climbing. It was still hot when, it was, when I was climbing. My sleeping bag is still a 30 degree sleeping bag. 
Um, so I still brought that because you got, got to remember your ratings on your sleeping bags are not comfortable ratings. Those are oftentimes the extreme ratings. So, so you won't die at 30 degrees. Correct. So that's one thing to keep in mind is make sure you have a properly rated sleeping bag uh, for whatever conditions and season that you're going to be climbing um, a big wall in. In an effort to keep this as short as we can, um, I second everything he just did and said. The difference is this airplane pillow is my pillow and I don't necessarily sleep with, sleep with my jacket on. And so I will take my jacket off and I will stuff this in there. Mm -hmm. And then what's nice is the way it's wrapped, you know, goes around me, it's less likely to come off, but I also have yeah. a tab here that I can uh, paracord with a long leash to the corner of the port ledge or um, one of the daisy yeah. long slings that we just clip everything to. Just think about how you're going to clip your setup. If you have a loose air mattress like I would, either on a portal ledge or normal ledge, you are either gonna have to like barrel knot the nozzle, the, the nipple, or you're gonna have to like girth hitch with a double length sling in the middle, which has, obviously it's not gonna necessarily work super good. It'll slow it down. One other tip you can do with a sleeping pad is if you don't bring an inflatable one, the foam ones, you can actually punch a hole through the tip of the corner yep. and again, girth hitch it around that corner and again, it's gonna be secure. But as you can see, every single one of our items has an attachment point back to the wall so it can't get blown away, et cetera. And the blue foam pads, not the corrugated waffa, wafer looking things, but those cheap blue ones, they are great padding for the sides of your haul bag. Mm -hmm. And it's to not just protect the stuff inside, it's to protect your haul bag from anything sharp and pointy inside, from poking a hole, from rubbing. It kills two birds with one stone if you just are willing to sleep on that. Yep. Never sleep on a portal ledge. You know it's like kind of soft and you know, you set it up in your house like we tell you and you're gonna practice like we tell you and you're like, this ain't so bad. I actually, funny story there, is I actually for an entire year before I lived in my van, I actually got rid of my bed completely and I lived on my portal ledge for a year. I will leave that. Just be a comfortable okay. lot. Did you sleep directly on the portal ledge or did you sleep on the air mattress? I always put an air mattress on top of my sleeping. Oh, for for the first ledge. several walls until I realized how life worked, mm -hmm. I slept on the portal ledge and I couldn't stay warm. Mm -hmm. Bet you can't guess why. So you got to put something down on the the thing. So yep. like I, if you know you're portal ledging every night, you could just blue foam cheap foam mattress. Yep. The thing, it's because awesome. it's already softish. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna ledge it, like hard ledge it, like eh, air mattress. Is pretty yep, nice. for sure. On one of the ledges on Zodiac, I actually punched a hole through my inflatable sleeping pad and I had no patch kit. So it was a long trip. Long trip for just one night and two days up that wall. Um, if you're gonna have an air mattress, have a patch kit. Um, because that would be shitty if that happened to you. Yeah. Speaking of shitty, as we segue into that se section, that's pretty smooth, right? Smooth yeah. as the oh, sh- Oh, yeah, I see yeah, what you did right there. Yeah, Good job, good job. Smooth as, smooth as the transitions that my shits take while yeah. I eat too much Mountain House. Um, <gasps> how are you going to clip everything to the wall? How are you going to put your, th your treasures in the poop tube you of your choice. Well, first off, I have to decide what is my poop going to be going into originally, right? So I have, this is my poop bag where all of my wag bags and wet wipes exist. So this is what I actually go down into and grab. Jesus. So this is just for like, <laughs> this is my massive stash, right? This is like- Oh, this is everything. This is like 25 bags in here. Okay, I don't okay. need 25 like, bags. Jesus. But you need to lay off the freeze dried <laughs> dinners, man. Inside of these comes like with a bag that you can buy um, that has two bags. So it's a double layered bag that you essentially poop into one bag and poop into another. Uh, don't you have an app? I have uh, like two episodes on how not to poop. One is almost a million views right now. You take this bag, just press it against that. <laughs> and then you want to get all the air out. So what you do is you take your mouth and then you go. <laughs> it's vacuum sealed. Let me shit on this system real quick. It's, it's a lot of plastic because they know a lot of people are really weird about pooping in bags. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it kind of can look and feel compact the way they package it. Mm -hmm. But by the time you open this up, whether or not you even went to the bathroom in it, it's pretty bulky by the time you got to put yeah, it away. Truthfully. And 
I don't really need to open this all up. And the kitty litter, yeah, whatever. But it still smells like shit, okay? I'll truthfully <laughs> agree that uh, it actually smells almost worse with it than just uh, the shit It's psychological itself. powder. Yeah. All you need to do, you just take a Ziploc bag and you roll it over two or three times so the rim is firm. And if you got anything on the edge, which I've actually never done, you can flip it over and immediately that's now the inside of the bag. You're not touching anything. Uh, the worst part's airing it out. You gotta push it against it. No, no I'm no, just kidding. No, <laughs> you that. push it out, right? Um, but by the time you put all of your wet wipes, not your toilet paper, in there, you don't see the shit anymore. No, like, yeah. And then it's only the, the, the bare minimum, right? And the mm -hmm. minimum amount of plastic. I always double Ziploc bag it. Absolutely. And then I put it in my two liter bottles, which you can go up and then you can go down. I fit... Uh, two people, three days into one two liter bottle. Because nice. if you keep the air out, there's not that much. You might shit a lot because you eat a lot, but just, just it doesn't take that much space up. Now, uh, figure out your system before you go. Yeah. Let me uh, emphasize this a little bit more. Do you really want your first poop on the nose after you did the king swing because you waited three days to take a shit for the first time outside in your life while everyone is watching the only thing worth watching on El Capitan, which is somebody doing the king swing. Yep. And now you're, I think it was the Eagle Ledge. You you're, <laughs> have to drop your drawers. <laughs> That's funny. That's karma. Yep. Uh, I've had people climb with me who have never gone to the bathroom outside and another person took all of his clothes off because he didn't know that your butthole's up here. And so I, I, I came out of the bathroom in India and I said, I get, you guys, just tell me, just tell me how, how do I use it? And, and they're like, brother, your butthole is right here. You just have to drop your drawers <laughs> right here. And then it's like, Oh yeah. Oh, and if you just drop your pants just below your butt, you're not pooping in your pants. Therefore, you really don't need to take your harness off or even your leg loops. I personally do not take my leg loops off to go to the bathroom. I just need to pull them down enough mm -hmm. in order to get where the hole is. And I don't know about you, but I can figure out where it is with the bag. I've never missed. Have Here's, you ever missed? I've never missed. Good, good for you. Here's the problem though is Truthfully, whether or not you want to believe it or not, and have the ability to hold it off like this guy. That was my friend. Make that wasn't sure, me. make sure that you're able to go pee first and then poop. Do not try to do them at the same time. I try to keep the liquids out of the bag. I can pick one and I could do that. I haven't met anybody else who can. Find out if you have the ability to pee and not poop and poop and not pee. I mm -hmm. hope you can do that first one. <laughs> yeah. Find out before you go, because then you can lean over the ledge or bottle or whatever you end up doing. We'll get into that. And you pee first and keep it out of the bag. Yep. That's gross. That's gross. Shit's gross, but pee is a whole different animal. An extra little tip to be checking out more into the Big Wall Bible mm -hmm. is a non-stink, but it's a non-plastic option to go to the bathroom. So make sure to read the Big Wall Bible to find out where that is. Yeah, because if you dry it out, it's gonna weigh less. Um, now, how do you take, well, you're traditional, you take a poop tube. I do take a poop tube, and my poop tube typically is usually a pretzel bin or an animal cracker bin. It's something that I was already gonna have packed already as like treats, um, but what I do is I take a big old pretzel bin. I essentially wrap it like my water bottle. So I still do the uh, strap system and yeah. I actually double it up. So I do four straps total. So one, two, three, four. And then it has a great big lid that I can take off. All of it goes in there. And usually those pretzel bins usually last two people, I don't know, three to five days. It depends how you package yep. your treasure. And then the one thing I do is at the end, I just take it and throw it in the trash at the end anyways. Or if I do have the chance to be in Yosemite longer, I do try to reuse it if I can. Kind of gross, but. I'll take my two liter bottle. That is now, I, I'm duct taping it closed back, by the way, after I three quarters cut around it, turning it into a Pac-Man. And I will take that two liter 
duct taped thing. Mm -hmm. And I will, um, especially if I'm at the top and we're wanting to hike down because it's gotta go in the bag. Mm -hmm. I'll put this in here because now this is almost all trash. And now I combine my lunch bag with my breakfast dinner bag because there's almost no food left. And then I've, now I've got two more layers of plastic. And I'll even fill this with pine needles if I'm at the top because it's not, it doesn't weigh anything. And it just helps air oh, freshen. My first poop tube was the PVC pipe traditional thing. Mm. Your poop isn't so gross, you need that level of weight and security and it's... Yeah. And more than likely most people are flying out to go make that and all that stuff to get it there. You're already taking the water bottles. Yeah. Just re reuse some form of something you're already taking. And what you can do is you can with a six, seven, eight mil rope uh, clip to the bottom of your haul bag and let it hang away from you depending mm -hmm. if it's an overhanging route or if you're gonna be um, hitting roofs all the time, you don't mm -hmm. want it to knock off. Mm -hmm. But I find that my two liter bottles don't do that. Just keep in mind, don't poop on a ledge, don't leave any waste <laughs> no. and pack it out with you. If you yeah. pack it in, you pack it out, toilet paper, everything. Wet wipes, one, are amazing. They're life changing. Use them on a wall, but don't bury them. Even if you're at the top or something, don't bury them. They don't decompose the same. So, and, and the normal ethic too of pooping into a bag and then burning it at the top too is no longer is bueno. so 1950s. We're past the days of tossing the poo bags. Yep. So like, don't do that. Think about it. Last thing to maybe talk about besides for just poop, what is the go-to method and most acceptable method to handle urine? Um, make sure. If you're like on the stove legs, make sure you go right in the crack. That way everybody gets it on their hands. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you're That's on a, like power right if there. If you're on a ledge, make sure you just kind of like lean a little bit, but drizzle it all over where you're gonna be sleeping. <laughs> Think about like the fact that people are peeing in these same spots over and over and always at like these belay stations, right? Mm -hmm. Or especially ledges. The most beautiful smell in the world to me is ammonia because that mm -hmm. means I'm getting close to a ledge and I can stand on my own feet again. Yeah. So do your best to be able to pee into a wide mouth bottle that includes ladies as well. If you need to bring a wee or whatever it's called. A uh, she wee. Try to bring a bottle to, to dispose of it and put it in there and then pack it out when you're done. So too. you could pour that out at the top yeah. and hike down those bottles. Um, now I can't fit in the top of a two liter bottle, but I could on one of the gallon jugs. Now, you carried the water up yep. to that point. You can carry it the rest of the way. Yep. If you're off on an obscure route, it's less of an issue. If you can pee where it doesn't end up on the route, that's better. But if you're like, I don't know, 50 feet to the left of the party below on like a steep overhanging Is leaning that tower. Rain? Is that rain? And you're on leaning tower and you kind of pee off to this crack off to the side, you might be okay or you might be a dick because that crack system goes this way while I'm on a C2 that I can't move left or right on and it just showered me solid wet Gross. while I'm in a puffy. Oh man. And it's like, I understand you need to go, but come on, like really think about the fact that you're on like a trade route and there's people below you. It's not just the middle of the wilderness. Yeah, and you do wind, have to be mindful. wind can, move that stuff quite a ways. I was peeing one way off Lost Arrow and the other guy was peeing. We both just- Got each other. Sh guy out, we got yeah. each other. And hit our own faces on the way over. Because the updraft. Think about your poo, pee, what you're gonna do. And I hate to say this, but you need to practice at home. Yeah. <laughs> and it's weird. Do not make your wall your first time pooping outside. Or, or in a bag specifically is what I'm referring to. Or just poop outside at least once for fun. Yeah, yeah. I actually really enjoy it now. Yeah, because you don't touch anything that doesn't belong to you, but practice at home. Yeah. Like just, just, it's, I know, I know it's hard to get your head wrapped around. You're gonna do it on a wall, you can do it at home. Hey, it's 2022. And uh, if you're not already on your phone watching this episode, then you for sure need to be charging your devices on the wall. <laughs> Super good enough. <laughs> Let's keep going. <laughs> Anyways, 2022, we got electronic stuff, right? Yep. And so you need to be able to charge it. Your GoPro, your phone, your headlamp, everything. Walkie talkies, if you have the Rocky Walkie, don't need So to. I actually would not take spare batteries for this because it mm -hmm. lasts so long. And uh, if I was more than three days on a wall, I'd be sure to just turn it off at night. But I can, I left it on the whole time I was on the Dano project. Mm. But uh, my phone in airplane mode, two, three days, but I need my phone. Like if I have an emergency, but I just, yep. I use that as an excuse to check my Instagram. Um, 
and how many times you hit this on my latest video, but you need to be able to charge your phone. And what do you use, solar panel or battery bank? Battery bank, I, that solar charger is just something extra. Battery bank I like, because it has two ports. And you can charge like, I don't, yeah, it's easier. You can charge things in the bag, Yep. plug it in. Yep. Um, headlamp, I use a zebra headlamp. I got it for caving, where if it goes out, you die. I have spare batteries. Mm -hmm. um, if it's gonna be wet, something cool I learned about caving is you put it in a jar, not a glass jar, like a plastic jar, and it keeps your batteries dry. Um, that battery headlamp setup is like a hundred plus dollars. Mm -hmm. If you're getting these $20, $30 headlamps, yeah. take at least two of them and all the spare batteries you need. But for me, I my whole setup's lighter because I have this really solid light source. Yep. What, I, what I have a, the Black Diamond 450 lumens one, but it comes with a USB chargeable uh, um, battery. So what's your battery? You can put normal batteries. I in. can either do three AAAs or that, and it's the same. It's compatible. Okay. And but it's USB, and I can just charge it, which is really nice. So you can have the spare batteries, but they don't. You can charge stuff, recharge yep. it. Yep. Um, light is as important as water, light is, and, water and food. Light is important. Light's important. Um, unless you're just really, really fast and climbing when it's in the middle, like sol summer solstice, you're gonna have your headlamp. Uh, we had somebody's headlamp die on a lead once, and it took him, I think, s four or five, six hours to lead this thing oh, wow. because he was doing it literally blind, and he he didn't change his head. Don't, don't point at me. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't change his headlamp. <gasps> Uh, batteries before coming up, he just brought spare batteries, which are in the bottom of the hall bag. It's mm. like, it wasn't well thought out. I like to have, um, I usually keep a headlamp down here and then I keep one on my uh -huh. helmet. I, because light, you need light. You, you need, need light. light, you need light, you need light. You need light, you need it. Think about just how bad everything goes when you don't have it. And plan for it. It doesn't weigh that much. Mm -mm. So what else do you put into your uh, electronics bag? I try to take as little as possible. Mm -hmm. And if you're not talking to the, the how not to Ryan, where I'm starting to bring more camera stuff, more mics, more this, more that, and I'm just gonna go climb. Cable, battery bank, batteries. I don't have batteries for anything except my Zebra headlamp, which is a very, it's a, um, they're Tesla batteries. Uh, mm -hmm. Are they really? They're, they're the same uh, type of, not, they're not okay. double A's, okay. they're slightly bigger. Yeah, yeah. But I don't, I keep the electronics, believe it or not, electronics to a minimum. Try to keep it waterproof too. And then, I'll put stuff in here, but this, I keep to a minimum, is going to go into my uh, personal slash miscellaneous bag slash my layers, not my clothes. I don't bring spare clothes. I just, if it's five and a half days, I'll throw the underwear away. But. <laughs> so I think that's a great segue for us to go into clothes. What do you bring for clothes mm -hmm. when you're on a wall? Do you bring any change of clothes for anything? Just the layers. I just bring layers too. Um, I live in Minnesota where we're at negative 45, uh, 12 months of the year. You van life's in that. Yeah. And we don't believe in bad weather. We just believe in ad inadequate clothing. So what I typically bring is one puffy, one thermal layer. Okay. A long sleeved R1, Patagonia R1. Okay. My t-shirt and raincoat. So that's like my top layer. So that's like, five different types of layers so I'm not over sweating and I'm matching the, the temperature, right? It depends on what season I'm climbing in. You're listing what I would wear in 60 degree weather. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, we all know I wear too many jackets. Then all I bring for my pants are the pants I'm wearing and my underwear. I don't bring any long johns, pajamas, anything unnecessary. And I typically like to wear some type of hiking wool socks uh, in my shoes, just in case my feet do get cold or wet, uh, or wet, and wool always does a good job of still yeah. keeping them warm when they're wet. Cotton kills. Don't buy a cotton swag and then use it on a wall. Mm -hmm. We have polyester versions, but no, seriously, like you want something that can dry out quickly and keep you warm when you're wet. So, mm -hmm. just really um, think about how many layers that are easy enough to put on. Top layers are easier to put on than bottom layers. Correct. Bottom layers, yeah. you're going to need some sort of a ledge and you're gonna probably take your, your leg loops off, kind of be there a little weird in your mm -hmm. swami. It's, it's not worth it. It's a pain in the ass. The other thing I would also recommend is some kind of sun protection. So whether that's a hat, the brim on your helmet, a bandana around your neck, or attaching a thing to the back of your helmet to protect your neck. I would neck. taper Velcro uh, 
some fabric just to the back because I don't want something touching my skin if it's hot out, I'm already hot. The part that would burn the most. Cool. Um, this part also would burn a lot and that would protect me from the sun. Those yeah. really, really thin, lightweight shirts that are long sleeve mm -hmm. with the hoodie, yep. those are have been great. Mm -hmm. And that um, could protect my arms because yeah. you're gonna get blasted by the sun. This just sucks the way it's into the next one because sun protection has to do with hygiene. Yeah. Um, I don't wear my sunscreen. Don't, I hope Andrea doesn't watch all these videos. <laughs> I'm from Minnesota. We burn like the snow. <laughs> okay. Um, try to wear sunscreen. So you have to bring some. Uh, try to not comb your teeth. Try to brush them. Uh, and you need a toothbrush to do that. Bring some small toothbrushes and don't bring mm -hmm. a whole toothpaste tube, right? Travel pack is good. Travel pack's fine for as long as you're gonna be up there. Mm -hmm. Think about everything. Try to even, if you're gonna get like super nerdy about prepping, try to live at your house not touching anything other than what's in that haul bag, including mm -hmm. the water, mm -hmm. including pooping in a bag, and make a day out of- um, Living on the wall big, at home. Big walling. Because mm -hmm. we're gonna make the videos about how to go up and how to haul and how to come down and how to follow and stuff. Uh, but this is, this is literally the stuff that made or braid my, mm -hmm. my success on a wall. I eventually, through desperation, figured out how to get up anything I wanted. And most of the time, climbers are coming from a background of climbing. So in one way, shape, or form, you've climbed on a wall. Not everybody has had the chance to live on a wall because most of the time you come back down after the end of the day and go home. So yeah. that's why we're taking the time and these videos are really long, but they're purposeful for this reason. And you still have to prep some of your gear. There's things that you can do to enhance your, um, pro that you're gonna take up, but that's gonna be more in that video where we talk about what your rack and all that stuff. Yep. Uh, this video's already too long. But it's, you're seeing the common thing. Practice, 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 prep, 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 prep. Think about mm -hmm. how everything's going to be connected. It's pretty frustrating for me when somebody brings these free beaners and thinks they did good for the world. When I go in their bag and literally nothing has a carabiner. And so as soon as they start pulling anything out of their, their bag, these get chewed up incredibly quickly and pretty mm -hmm. soon we're stacking cams to where you've got an entire rack of black diamonds on one carabiner. So have the sleeping bag uh, and you can get, this is actually I think a great spot for these little guys that are kind mm -hmm. of obnoxious to I mean, actually use on lead. They're too small to do stuff. Too small but, but this is perfect. But fully rated. Yep. You always want something that, not some lever beaner you 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 were able to peel off of a, a rappel because you were more sketchy than the last guy. Take fully rated gear, because you never know where stuff's going to get used, mm -hmm. and clip one of these to the sleeping bag, one of these to each food bag, and one of these to anything else that you're gonna yep. jet boil, pull out of the bag. And if you don't know where to get some spare beaners from, disassemble your sport draws. Like, you don't have to buy brand new draw, uh, spare beaners. Mm -hmm. You can disassemble other gear that you have to get those beaners before coming up on the wall. Like you don't need your 12 quick draws because you're gonna be using Alpine draws anyways. So yeah. So just keep in mind, um, free beaners are an essential part of the miscellaneous pile to have already been put on there. Real quick, let's talk about knives. Mm -hmm. um, I hate this carabiner knife with a passion. It likes to open by itself. <laughs> oh, that's scary. I've had it open on a Highline once while oh I took a whipper. Oh my goodness. Live and learn. Hopefully the live part. Mine. Is uh, who's it by? This is a Petzl knife that I actually uh, end up booting from a friend, Johnny Hudson, um, and then he just gave it to me. But this just stays in the back of my harness for cutting old tat, uh, worn out gear that's on a wall. But you need to have a knife, and it's also good to cut like hard salami and all that stuff too. It it's important to have a knife. Um, so this is not that great, but what is is this Trango really tiny knife? I think Hans Florin came up with this one. And it's a little bit, um, it's pretty tiny. What's cool is like, you can keep it on the carabiner. Once you open it, you can put the mm -hmm. carabiner back on so you're not at risk of dropping it. And then it's, yep. you never hesitate taking it. And I also have nail clippers that are super flat, also by Trango, um, in case, like, when, not in case, your fingernails are just peeled backwards. I almost put my eye out. They don't weigh anything. It's nice to just have some physical care that you can do to your, your body. Yep. Mm -hmm. Or um, kill your partner. If, if, if they're bad, just cut the rope, you know, so. Uh, vertical limit style. Yeah, yeah. Do you care about your sister? 
cut the rope. <laughs> oh my god, what a stupid scene that was. <laughs> it's so terrible. Damn it, no! I cut the damn rope! Cut no, it! Do it! Don't Doesn't do matter it. about me, just cut it! No! We're running out of time here! Don't do it, Just Peter. cut it! Nobody's Don't gonna blame you for it. it, just cut it, Peter! No! We're gonna die! No! How many of you are gonna die? No! Just cut it, Peter! No! Please! Every big wall essential is have your car as a safe haven. Yes, you want to celebrate, you're off the wall. Living in comfort. Uh, not just flip-flops, I'm just trying to be funny here, but it definitely, <laughs> January doesn't matter, flip-flops. When you get off a wall, you do not want to wear shoes. No, you do not. But you want to have water in your car, not food. You want to have water in your car. You want to have a spare change of clothes. Yeah. Uh, have a little bit of deodorant in the bear box. Um, because that can go a long ways if you're not able to take a shower for still another day or two, yep. or a long drive home in my case. Oh, oh, I said something refreshing like a beer. No, well, yeah, in the bear box, but no, 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 no. Uh, hide a key. Oh, Have yes. a freaking yeah. spare key, especially if you took your key up the wall. Yeah. Or backpacking I super I never far. bring my key with me. It's just like, I've took it in the cave when I went and mm. we, we didn't have a, a hide a key. And I was like, that's scary at so many levels because we're in the middle of nowhere, an hour and a half yeah. away from home. There's no service. It's like, so have a spare key. Have, don't have your Epic after you got to your car. And you can't get in. <laughs> and you can't get in. Yeah. And so it's nothing's worse than running out of water, getting in your car and you still have no water. So anyways, be prepared when you get back down. So to wrap up that note, as a weekend warrior, I would show up with the bag ready to go if I'm doing a one load wonder. Uh, I would have the bag ready to go if I'm just gonna go up, fix, and leave something and have the second bag or setup. So I'd bring that bag back empty, but like leave it in the car. This one be completely ready to go. All this prep is done. Then I have my third bag of stuff for when I get back down. And then of course we put the note on the windshield if you're gonna leave it in a place for a while and just plan, 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 prep, 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 and make sure you subscribe so you can get to the third video where we're gonna cover what? Uh, actually packing the haul bag, getting all of this stuff now into our bags. Yeah, because that is an art in itself. Thank you for watching such a long video. Sorry uh, for anybody who wasn't interested in this stuff and I don't know how you made it to the end, but uh, if you did, click like Subscribe. just to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> you get asked this all, all the time. Kind of was I have had my fly down yeah, for, the totally. first, uh, uh, for the first day. I saw this just kicked no, a little you're, bit. You're good, good. you're right. good. So on a wall, I get asked.